Jack Wilkin from Seattle Boatworks, and he's going to talk us through this big diesel to electric power conversion that they've just undergone on their cruising boat. So this is the space the engine was in. It was a little Yanmar 12-horse uh, diesel motor. And so we, we just took that out and the, all the fuel systems and everything out of here. And then we replaced it first with this electric motor, which is, which is virtually the same horsepower as, the, as what we took out. Um, and then we needed, because it's 48 volts, then we needed, and we wanted 200 amp hours, we needed eight batteries. So we used the, we used the original spots, which there was a battery on each side. So that gave us two, and then, and then we just bracketed in all these other batteries. You can see. And then, the really the heart of this is not the motor, but the controller. So it used to be that you used a rheostat if you wanted to control an electric motor. But when you use a rheostat, you're choosing, you're virtually just spending electricity for nothing, just creating heat. So what this does is it actually chops up the DC into little packets. So it, it's currency, con it's current control, sorry, not currency, uh, current control. And then this is, the, this is the shore power charger right here. And does charging take significantly longer for a bank this big as it would uh, with just one or two or three? We put in a, the smallest charger we could get, mm -hmm. actually, and... It's char it charges everything up pretty much in about four hours, okay. four or five hours. And, and the size yeah. of the charger you were doing just for space saving simply, or was there another reason that you went with a small charger? It just seemed to be the better balance in this case, mm -hmm. because it, it was charging when we were, it basically was charging overnight mm -hmm. in situations like that. So it, we didn't really need a big charger. It fit in there really well. I mean, you can, you can see everything just kind of just fit perfectly. Mm-hmm. And then um, there, there will eventually be a generator in, in here, not in this space, but at the other end. Um, and so we put a, we've already got the fuse in for that, as well as the fuse for the motor there. Okay, so now uh, Alex is up on deck, and Jack's going to point out what happens when you turn the engine on. Okay, so the first you're going to hear a click, and that's inside here. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And, so now everything's active. That's just a solenoid that that, that connects all the cables. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you want to give it some forward, Alex? Okay, and that's reversed, obviously. Yep. Yeah. It's instant torque. It's a complete. It has the ability to give full torque at, at, well, it's actually, the way they rated it, they actually say at zero RPM, but that means obviously at any RPM. And Jack, you were saying um, with, the, with the setup for this that the shaft um, that's turning there, is that the same shaft that was used with the diesel? This, this coupling and this shaft were on the diesel engine, this and this, and this uh, adapter here. All of that was on the diesel engine. This coupling on this side was machined for the electric motor. Got it. I just want to point this out. You see these holes? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's because there, there are batteries on the other side, and we're trying to keep all the batteries at the same temperature. Got it. Because when you're charging, the temperature of the batteries is really important. And speaking of temperature, you pointed out to me that there's you, you added an aftermarket uh, right. temperature gauge. So there's a temperature controller, and the, the sensor is right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it picks up the air coming out of the motor, and then when it gets up to a certain temperature, there's actually a blower that'll turn on to circulate the air in here. But to the, did you say that to this point you haven't had We've any never temperature come up issues? To that temper, yeah, temperature. So it right. runs real cool, right? Um, unless, unless we, I probably the only way we would ever come up to any kind of temperature like that, and I'm not even sure then is that if we had a generator and we were running. Actually, it was a hybrid, a diesel electric. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, um, it and just thinking about that temperature sensor, sensor which you guys added yourselves. Right. Uh, otherwise, this is a, a system, and how how would a person choose between a system or or piecing it together part by part? Well, so you need a motor, 
and you need a controller. Mm -hmm. And then you need, then the controller has other parts that go with it. There's a monitor, and then there's, uh, then there, like the throttle has to, all of these cables here, this is all plug and play. Okay, so one of these is the monitor, one of these is the throttle, one of these is the, literally the key switch, and the other is the button that he pushed, that made the, the solenoid go on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of those cables have to run back to the cockpit. Got it. Okay. The rest of these cables all, all connect in with the batteries. But basically, one set of these cables, this, this set, connects to the batteries, mm -hmm. and this set goes to the motor. Got it. And so the like having having those things all work together as the same part of the ecosystem would be pretty hard to accomplish if uh, if you were going part by part. You, it's not it's not impossible to do, but there are little refinements that go into this. Mm -hmm. There's little refinements in this box because the the controller is in this box, but there's more than that in the box. Got it. Okay. So there are other things that have been added. You know, um, when you buy a motor, obviously. The gears don't come with it, the, the tooth belt, the, the guards, all of the mounts and everything. So all of those have to be would have to be fabricated separately. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it couldn't be done, but that's the, obviously the advantage of most of the systems I know are, are pretty much just, you just buy the system and then you can put it in. Great. The thing that... The thing that's usually the most optional about all of this is the batteries. Money that I love. Yes, money that I love.